So Elizabeth Warren, I've been pretty pleasantly surprised by the way she's running her campaign because it's very evident that she's going out of her way to run a very issue-oriented campaign. And her slogan is, I've got a plan for that. So what that tells me is that she's trying to demonstrate to voters that she is attentive to their policy-specific concerns. If you run a campaign based on policy, then I think that's really going to help you out. And it shows because she is rising in the polls. And according to her Iowa comms director, she also has a sign for everything. She's putting her policies front and center so that way people can choose what policy that they care about if they support Elizabeth Warren. However, as Emma Viglin points out, there's no sign here for Medicare for All. And Emma states, Warren is actively pivoting away from campaigning on healthcare, and it's really obvious. It's a massive blotch on an otherwise perfectly run campaign, in my view. And to be clear, it's not just that, oh, well, she doesn't have a Medicare for All sign, so she must be pivoting away from Medicare for All. No, this issue goes deeper, actually. Elizabeth Warren has been very conspicuously moving away from Medicare for All. Her slogan is, I've got a plan for that, but it's almost like she goes out of her way to avoid talking about Medicare for All. And when she touches on healthcare, it's very vague. There's never any policy specifics. And to give you an example of that, when she did her scene in Town Hall, she was asked about her support for Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill. And watch how quickly she ran away from that. You are a co-sponsor of Senator Bernie yep. Sanders' Medicare for, for All bill. And I understand there are a lot of different paths to universal coverage. But, yep. but his bill that you've co-sponsored would essentially eliminate private insurance. Is that something you could support? He's got to run away for that. I think we get everybody together. And that's what it is. We'll decide. Um, I've also co-sponsored other bills, including expanding Medicaid is another approach that we use. But what's really important to me about this is we never lose sight of what the center is. Because the center is about making sure that every single person in this country gets the coverage they need and that it's at a price that they can afford. We start with our values, we'll get to the right place. So make no mistake about it, what you saw there was Elizabeth Warren running away from her support of Medicare for All. Well, you supported Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill. Yeah, but I also support these other ideas. Now that's incredibly startling to me because when you go back to 2017 when she co-sponsored Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill and she spoke out about Medicare for All and she gave this really passionate defense, you know, it assured me that even if she has some flaws as a politician, even if she let us down from time to time, she still has the right ideas and she's fighting for what we all want, which is Medicare for All. However, for whatever reason, since she launched her campaign, she's just going out of her way to avoid even mentioning Medicare for All. And when you go to her website, there's not even a healthcare section available. And for someone who has a plan for everything, I just don't get this. Why would you do something like this and not expect us to notice? Now, this isn't me trying to release an attack video on Elizabeth Warren. This is me saying, what gives? What's happening? And I'm not the only one who has noticed this. Because when you go to Jacobin writer Tim Higginbotham, he talks about how she really has gone out of her way to avoid this issue. And he writes about how at town halls, she really refuses to touch this issue. He states, Warren had several opportunities in the town hall to address the healthcare crisis. Instead, she avoided the topic almost entirely, even when discussing issues directly related to healthcare, like repealing the Hyde Amendment and improving access to hearing aids. She neglected to propose a comprehensive policy solution. Unfortunately, this was not a simple case of forgetfulness. In fact, it continues a disturbing trend with the Warren campaign. Check her website. In a long and thorough issues page full of bold plans to alleviate American suffering, Warren makes no mention of healthcare. View her campaign materials. Warren has yard signs dedicated to several of her major policy proposals, but not a single one about healthcare. Follow her campaign appearances. You'll hear the usual platitudes. Healthcare is a human right, everyone deserves access to care, but you won't hear her endorse a specific policy. Warren's avoidance of the issue is shocking. Healthcare repeatedly polls as the most important issue for voters. 80% told Gallup 
Recently, it's extremely or very important to their vote. This is no surprise as nearly 30 million Americans lack health insurance and those who have it face prohibitive out-of-pocket costs and the ever-present fear that their employer will throw them off their plan. The system is a colossal mess and Americans are desperate for a solution. It's fair to ask why Warren, who supports bold, progressive policies on a number of major issues, is avoiding the most important issue to voters. It could be a reluctance to attach herself to a rival candidate's signature policy, or it could be a way to avoid conflict with the powerful healthcare corporations in her home state of Massachusetts. Either way, it meshes well with a years-long effort by Democrats to blur the meaning of Medicare for All by gesturing goodwill towards single-payer advocates while attempting to redefine the phrase and apply it to public option proposals that preserve the private insurance industry. By following this playbook, Warren is actively supporting the corporate effort to kill the growing Medicare for All movement. Warren supporters shouldn't tolerate this. And I co-sign that 100%. If you support Elizabeth Warren, I get it. It's like week after week, she comes out with a really bold, innovative policy idea. I mean, she was the first in this race, I believe, to propose student loan debt cancellation. Now, she's not canceling 100% of student loan debt like other candidates, like Wayne Massam, but I mean, nonetheless, for a major candidate to propose this, it's, it's phenomenal. But with that being said, it's odd. If you've got a plan for everything, if you've been bold on everything else, but you're backing away in a very conspicuous way when it comes to a really important issue like Medicare for All, I can't help but wonder, what gives? What gives? Why are you pivoting? Because we all see it. We all realize it. So I wish that somebody would ask her about this in mainstream media. I've invited her on the program and I heard back from her campaign and then they started ghosting me. So it's evident that she's not coming on the Humanist Report. But for a journalist in mainstream media or even in indie media, if she goes on TYT again, please ask Elizabeth Warren why she's very clearly distancing herself from Medicare for All after previously supporting it. Why is she doing this? If you've got a plan for everything, then you can't go out of your way to avoid talking about something that people are concerned about. You can't tell us that healthcare is a human right if you don't support the policy that makes it a human right by guaranteeing it, by making it free at the point of service. Now, Saying that healthcare is a human right, let's just face it, it no longer has any meaning because every corporate Democrat, including John Delaney, who's going out of his way to attack Medicare for all, will frequently say healthcare is a human right and I support universal healthcare. But these words are meaningless if they don't support Medicare for all explicitly and support this idea that healthcare should be free at the point of service, meaning if you don't have any money, you could still see a doctor. They don't believe that healthcare is a human right. Because something that's a human right, that shouldn't be an exclusionary thing. Like, if you truly believe healthcare is a human right, then a homeless person on the streets who doesn't have a dollar to his or her name should be able to get access to said right. So, I really, really hope that Elizabeth Warren reverses course because she's gaining in the polls. So, as you become a prominent contender in this 2020 field and purport to represent the progressive community, you can't leave out Medicare for all. This is one of our most important issues. So to leave this out, it's just incredibly puzzling to me and infuriating. So for the love of God, if anybody is able to ask Elizabeth Warren a question, ask her why she is pivoting away from Medicare for all after previously supporting it, because this is a troubling sign of what's to come. If she's elected president, what else is she going to pivot away from? If she's going to pivot away from something as important as Medicare for All, what else is she going to pivot away from? We should expect and demand better from politicians who claim to be progressive. And Elizabeth Warren is no exception. I also criticize Bernie Sanders where it's warranted. So I'm not going to withhold criticism when it comes to Elizabeth Warren. If you're going to claim to be progressive, then you've got to walk the walk. And the fact that you refuse to talk about Medicare for All is incredibly troubling. So she's got to give us an explanation. Because when you're running a great campaign and you've got a policy for pretty much everything, to exclude healthcare doesn't make any sense. And she's got to explain herself here. Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous. 
and he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly, 